Hello everyone, this is Howard from the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature. Uh, today we're using a program called Stellarium uh, to reveal the sky and the highlights that we're going to see tonight, uh, April 14th, 2020, and uh, what we can expect to see uh, significant in the sky over the next, at least the next week, the next seven days. Uh, this program, Stellarium, is completely free. You can download this on your own and put this on your home computer and do largely what we're going to be doing today. You can explore the sky on your own. Anyway, uh, let's begin by go ahead and accelerating into the evening. Now, I'm very careful about uh, going too quickly uh, like that. So I have, uh, when I do that too quickly, I find that uh, I go from um, noon. Uh, there we go. I go from noon to midnight in about two seconds flat, and I don't want to make anybody sick. Okay, so as we look, we're looking into the western sky, and what we're going to see are some, largely what I think are some pretty familiar objects to many of us as we look into the sky. Uh, we see two of the brightest objects you can see in the sky over here. Um, let's actually just put their labels up. Venus. This is the third brightest natural object in the sky. And I have to say natural because occasionally the International Space Station can actually be seen brighter than Venus. Now that all depends on its angle relative to the observer on the Earth and the Sun. Um, and while the ISS is very bright, it's not always brighter than Venus. But because it can be, technically can't just simply say Venus is the third brightest object in the sky like we used to move to a few years ago. Anyway, so it's the third brightest object, natural object in the sky. Uh, the only two objects brighter than Venus, of course, are the Sun and the Moon. So Venus is number three. Uh, Jupiter would be number four. And then right over here, we see number five. This is the brightest star in the nighttime sky. That is the star, as we zoom in, it should pop this name up. There we go. Sirius. Sirius is, uh, this is a star that in... Uh, stellar distance terms. It's about eight and a half light years away, so um, this is largely the reason why it is the brightest star visible to us in the nighttime sky. Um, it isn't an exceptionally energetic star, but because it's fairly close to us and a little bit brighter than the sun, um, it uh, appears as the brightest star in the nighttime sky. Now, I've always got to make that distinction because once you've been corrected by a seven-year-old, you always, you always remember. Uh, I once made the mistake of saying that Sirius was the brightest star in the sky, and uh, I was immediately corrected. Nighttime sky uh, by a very young uh, and very uh, sharp uh, listener in my audience. Anyway, uh, Sirius here uh, marks out uh, Alpha Canis Majoris, which is the brightest star in the constellation of the Big Dog. It happens to be the brightest star in the nighttime sky. So let's scroll out again. Here we go. We see both Venus and Sirius in the sky. And let's go ahead and uh, accelerate again into the evening. There we go to oh, a little bit further. Let's go to about 9.15. So there we go, we're at nine o'clock. And you'll see that the program is actually simulating satellites moving through the sky because it also and some satellite information, track information. There we go. All right, so we're at uh, 9.15 in the evening. And as we look to the west, there we see this uh, beautiful little arrangement right here. Let's bring that a little bit closer. Can I do this without? There we go, distorting the view. We see... Uh, this star cluster here. Now this is technically this is part of our autumn sky, so I, I shouldn't even mention this, but we see it here in the program, so it's hard to ignore. Let's go back back out here. There we go. So what we see here is the star cluster known as the uh, Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. Here are their mythological half-sisters, the Hyades. Both of these constellations are uh, or both of these star clusters are in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. And uh, what we get is this interesting arrangement. Uh, it won't last long. Venus is going to be shifting in our sky. But what we have is a interesting arrangement of those two star clusters. Uh, the Pleiades, the Hyades with the bright star Aldebaran, also known as Alpha Tauri. 
and capping that off is the Venus there making this interesting little triangle of objects. Now, uh, over here, trailing not too far behind Taurus and soon to be descending into the western horizon, uh, right in between, sandwiched between Taurus and Canis Major, home to Sirius there, there's that bright star, we we'll see the familiar arrangement of stars known as Orion. Uh, as we grow, uh, scroll in, there we go. Uh, there we identify the stars by name. Uh, from the top, Betelgeuse, of course, the star that's been making the news recently, as uh, a star that we, we know is going to go supernova relatively soon. Uh, unfortunately for us humans, soon to a star can mean any time over the next 100,000 years, and that's just not soon enough for us. So we were hoping that some of the things that we were seeing with Betelgeuse indicated that that star was going to explode relatively soon, but that's probably not the case. Um, so, again, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, then the three stars of the belt, El Nitak, El Nilam, and Taka. Their names mean, respectively, the belt, the girdle, and the string of pearls. We've got Saif here, meaning the sword, typically seen dangling off the belt of Orion. And then, of course, Rigel down here, which means foot. In fact, if you put up the artwork, this should probably reveal this. There we go. Yep, there's Rigel the foot, and, well, Saif, uh, in some artwork you'll see that is connected to the sword right there, uh, dangling off the belt. Now, Betelgeuse up there, I think it was erroneously listed as the armpit of the giant. I think it actually means, from perspective, it means the arm of the giant. And then there's Bellatrix. <clears throat> okay. Get rid of that artwork there. Now, this is a constellation that is slowly descending into the horizon. So, uh, if you sneak a peek view, sneak a view now, you can probably get a peek of uh, this area right here. It's really hard to ignore this. Oh, look, there goes a satellite moving through the field of view. Um, you will see this occasionally. Let's kind of move into the field of view. If you happen to look up into the sky, you'll notice this little point of light moving relatively slowly as we move out through the field of view. Those are satellites. And you, if you sp spend a lot of time, like I do, looking at the sky, you'll see them quite frequently. It's kind of fun, the simulation here actually created the view. Anyway, as we zoom in, this little area right below the three stars of the belt here, this glowing patch of the sky called uh, what's generally referred to as uh, the Orion, uh, the Great Orion Nebula. Um, this is a uh, what we would call an emission nebula. It's a patch of gas that reveals a clump of baby stars being born inside. Um, I think estimates are somewhere several thousand stars uh, um, are being formed in this glowing nebulous region right here. It is one of the most observed areas in the sky uh, and also one of the most photographed, certainly by amateur astrophotographers. Uh, this is the Orion Nebula here. And then right over here, this is kind of fun, this is called the Running Man Nebula. And uh, this is not something you can see with the, uh, the, the eye. Uh, this is typically something that shows up in photographs, and if you ever uh, get into amateur astrophotography, I promise you, you'll become familiar with the Orion Nebula. It's generally the place that most amateur astrophotographers cut their teeth. Uh, they sort of learn by uh, practicing on the Orion Nebula. It's one of the brightest nebulas in the sky. And this one uh, is uh, charmingly known as the Running Man Nebula. Um, I think it is connected to the Running Man from the, the little AOL logo. You can see the little guy with his arms you know, tossed up in the air and arms outstretched. There's one leg and there's another leg and there's arms. Anyway, the Running Man Nebula found right there, uh, connected to the Orion Nebula. This is a, these are both beautiful little star forming regions. Anyway, as I was saying, descending into the western horizon, so leaving us here for for the rest of the season very soon. So as we pull out, what we are looking at now is into this part of the sky. We're gonna go ahead and change the date. We want to get to the evening of the 21st. So we're going to change the date. You see how the sky shifts. This is what's slowly happening as the Earth moves around the sun. There we go. We're on the evening of the 21st. Oh, look at that. 2121 on the 21st. So this is our sky and what we see when we look out to the Oops, let's get this over here. We're still early on, so we're going to go ahead and set this a little bit later. And again, I'm always very conscious about not going too fast. 
we want that constellation of Lyra to come up. And there it is, marked by the fifth brightest star in the sky, Vega. So here we are, about 1.30. Yeah, that's perfect. You know what we see creeping up, of course, is you can see the glow of the Milky Way galaxy right there. Let's bring that in. Yep. This is the central region of our galaxy, and this is just starting to creep up. And uh, Sadly, when this is up high in the sky and beautifully visible in our sky, it's, uh, it's in the middle of the month of July. When, well, certainly here in the Florida, the skies are terrible. So as we look, we see Vega here, and then we have this little marker here, this uh, thing that looks like a greenish glowing star. That's called the radiant point uh, for the meteor shower known as the Lyrids. Now, what I mean by radiant is that this is like, uh, if you can imagine um, the spokes of a wheel, this is the hub where all the spokes kind of radiate outward. And uh, those spokes are where we see the streaks that we call the Lyrid meteor shower. So you may see a streak over here, or a streak over here, or a streak over here, and if you trace them all back, they would all seem to originate from this place in the sky. Unlike that shooting star right there. Uh, this place in the sky is called the Radiant, and uh, it's sort of like the hub, and that's where all the streaks would appear to originate from. So don't expect to look right there and see all of the Lyra meteor showers. You'll be looking across the sky, and the best way to observe this, of course, is just to lay down in the grass with a blanket and try to get as a, a maximum view of the sky as you can get. Okay, so this is, of course, at 1.30 in the morning. It's a late time activity, uh, but if you go somewhere dark, the rewards can just be absolutely stunning, and uh, these you're developing lifetime memories here. Um, to see a truly beautiful meteor shower in a really dark skies, and of the Milky Way off in the background. This would be absolutely stunning. Okay, let's wrap this up by accelerating again. There we go. And we're going to take this right to the early morning hours, and you can clearly see, because the labels are on, you can see what's coming up. And we've got three beautiful planets here. Let's take that right to about 5.30. There we go. This is right before the dawn. And look at, this is our sky. This is what we would see if we were able to see it in July. Unfortunately, cloudy weather for us here in Florida prevents us from seeing this. But here in April, you can see it at 5.30 in the morning. And this is why I encourage people to take advantage of the, the nice weather this time of the year to take a look at this part of the sky that generally is ex inaccessible to us. So here at 5.30 in the morning for you early risers, what you'll see are three beautiful bright objects in a row right here three uh, of the uh, planets that are visible to the naked eye, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. And of course, not long after this, what we'll see, there comes the glow of the sun, wiping out everything, at least for the daytime, and then eventually we'll be back into the evening. Anyway, thanks again for joining us, folks. We'll see you again next Tuesday for another Star Talk Tuesday.